twice a month, the fully ordained monastics, so the bhikshuni sangha, gather to perform the posada. And so this is a ceremony where they, trans, um, they confess their transgressions, um, restore their precepts, and recite all of their precepts. And the novice monastics are invited both at the, near the beginning of the ceremony and also near the end. And one of the things that is recited um, at the end of this ceremony are the seven vinayas of the seven recent Buddhas, including Shakyamuni Buddha. And there's one in particular that keeps getting my attention. Um, and I've recognized why it's getting my attention is because I do pretty much the opposite of it. And I've seen that this kind of mental habit causes a lot of misery. Um, so I wanted to read it and then talk a little bit about it. <clears throat> so it says, just as a bee feeding on flowers extracts only their nectar without spoiling their color or fragrance, so a bhikshu or bhikshuni entering a city or village is mindful only of his or her own behavior to see if it is correct and does not interfere in others' affairs or inspect what they do or do not do. This is the Vinaya Tathagata Krakuchanda, the Arhat, the fully awakened one. So the part that really gets my attention is they don't inspect what others do or do not do. I do that a lot. <laughs> I've seen this habit in my mind of uh, quite detailed analysis of what is their motivation, why are they doing that, I don't understand. Um, and these, this could happen with very minor actions. Um, and it's been just fascinating to see this in my own mind. Um, I did look because I was like, wow, these are really amazing um, Vinayas, these seven Vinayas. And I, I looked it up and Venerable did give commentary on these during EML in um, 2013. And so I watched a bit of this one and she really uh, talks mainly about um, being mindful of our own actions. Um, but, and, and says this comes in the context of monastics at the time of the Buddha um, going to a town or a village for alms round. And so to, be, to pay attention to what's happening in their own body, speech, and mind, um, and to not look at what all the lay people are doing. Um, but she also said this could be applied to what happens in a monastery, and that um, we need to check up and see when we're inspecting others' behavior, if it's helpful to do that or if it's not so helpful to do that. And so I've been thinking that, um, of course, we see what others do and do not do, right? Um, it's obvious most of the time. I mean, we hear them speak or we see their action. And I've noticed in myself that this is, it's really dangerous to start conceptualizing about this too much. Because um, when what they do is harmful, then we can easily, or I can easily go into um, feelings of superiority or arrogance, thinking, oh, I wouldn't do that. I don't do that kind of behavior um, or judgment. And so this is really dangerous to start judging one another in terms of our behavior or our speech. Um, but on the other hand, um, we need to, out of compassion, um, help each other. And Venerable, in her commentary on this, uh, Vinaya says that. We, we can't ignore what others do, especially in the context of training, that we need to help one another. Um, but we need to do it with compassion and not with judgment. Um, the other thing I've noticed is I can see someone doing something virtuous. And even that is dangerous to start conceptualizing about. Because if I start to conceptualize about that, maybe it's their ability, 
um, in something or their knowledge, then easily I can go into jealousy. I can feel inferior to them. There can even be malice. Um, and so this is quite harmful. But instead, I can look when others do something virtuous and I can rejoice. So I'm really trying to um, pull my mind out of the habit of um, jealousy and instead move it to rejoicing. And then there's all those other things that are neither uh, non-virtuous, they're not harmful, but they're also not virtuous per se. They're just kind of neutral actions. And this is, these are the ones that I can get, um, I can go into a lot of detailed analysis about and contemplation about, which is totally useless and such a waste of my precious human life. You know, like, um, why, why don't they heat up their leftovers? Or why do they walk in that direction? Or why do they walk in that way? Or um, why do they wake up so early? or stay up so late, <laughs> you know, and, and then I start to think about that. Oh, well, does that make them better than me? Does that make me inferior? I get into this very intricate analysis of how their behavior is some kind of reflection on me. Um, so then I was thinking, like, what is the point of all of this analysis? You know, I could be analyzing the Buddhist teachings and instead I'm analyzing why someone does that. <laughs> um, and I think what's deep down is this fear of um, not being good enough. I have to look at others and what they do and then check to see where I am in comparison. And this is so painful. Um, and actually, it doesn't matter whether I'm inferior or superior in all these various little ways. What matters is what my motivation is for acting and speaking and what kinds of thoughts are going on in my mind. And so I've been thinking about, well, how can I ex um, assess my practice in a way that doesn't involve comparing myself to other people? And I thought, well, one of those ways is I can compare my own present actions of body, speech, and mind with the actions of body, speech, and mind that I've had in the past. So how have my physical behaviors been refined through Dharma practice? How, in what ways have I restrained myself from certain harmful actions? So one of those in my case is drinking. Very early on in Dharma practice, I quit drinking. And so to compare with my own past actions is really helpful because then I can inspire myself. I can encourage myself. Oh, I am changing. Or what are some ways in which my speech has improved or I've um, refrained from harmful speech? Well, now at least when I'm talking about something um, very worldly, kind of totally random, like, I don't know, a show or a movie, I'm aware of it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't really need to be talking about this. Um, and before there was no awareness that that was even a problem. Um, I spent hours and days talking about entertainment and all kinds of other things. And now, too, um, checking in my mind and seeing what thoughts um, I have and to see, you know, are more of my thoughts virtuous than in the past? Well, yeah, I have a lot of non-virtuous thoughts, but there are more virtuous thoughts than I had in the past and less non-virtue. Um, and the other way I can compare my behavior is to compare my behavior of body, speech, and mind with my precepts, and I can compare it also with my values. And so this is what this Vinaya is talking about, is really being mindful of how we uh, walk through space, how we use our body. Um, Venerable in her commentary talks about um, how we speak, how we walk, it expresses something about what's in our mind. 
Um, and so to be really attentive to how we're using our body and also um, how we're speaking, that also is expressing what's happening in our mind. Um, and again, also our thoughts, because um, it is our thoughts that motivate actions of um, body and speech. And so I think in summary, um, the advice that we're given at the beginning of retreat is stay on your own dingwa. So this applies for monastics and so we stay on our sitting cushion. Um, but basically this means we, we stay focused on what we're doing. Um, and that's helpful not only in retreat, but also out of retreat, maybe more helpful out of retreat. Um, and it's also not just a practice for monastics. Um, I, this is so applicable to everyone. Um, it, there's so much benefit to be had by uh, paying attention to what we're doing and not looking outward in, in investigating what others are doing. So we could also think about this as minding our own business or uh, staying in our own lane, you know, as little uh, phrases to help us, you know. Um, if we see our minds starting to go off and uh, contemplating what others are doing, just reminding ourselves, you know, this is not my business. Um, actually, Dharma practice is what we're doing. It's what we're thinking, what we're, how we're speaking. Um, and so it's correcting and improving our ways of speaking and acting and thinking. Um, that's what's actually gonna help us progress on this path um, and not thinking at nauseam about what others are doing. Um, so for the benefit of all, especially those we live with, um, let's stay on our own dingwa. <laughs>